Hello everybody, my name is David Sterry and I wanted to show you guys the 21 uh, Bitcoin computer. Uh, so basically this is a computer that is a Raspberry Pi with a mining chip attached to it. And I'm just going to take you through some of the commands. Now here I am already logged into it. And I'm going to start out by just showing the 21 status uh, command. shows my account name there and it shows uh, the hash rate, uh, whether it's mining or not, uh, shows the amount of satoshis that I've mined, um, also a balance here and uh, they put it in terms of how many queries you could do against their service, uh, 21's service, um, although I don't think that that works yet, uh, it's an estimate. So okay, then the next thing we can do is 21 log, that'll show kind of history of what's happened most recently on the 21 Bitcoin computer and uh, with the account. So um, for example, it looks like somebody purchased uh, my up premium thing and uh, which is a directory server uh, to find endpoints. And uh, so that's the log and you can scroll through it and whatnot. Um, it will show history. I don't know how far back it goes, but you can see basically like every 10 minutes it gives you how many Satoshis you mined. And they're uh, giving you that sort of by a share model. Um, it's not you know actual blocks that they are mining with their pool at that time. They're just paying you for how many shares you sent in during the last whatever, five, 10 minutes. So we quit that. And the next command I'll do is 21 mine. And this is actually supposed to give you an advance. Since I'm already mining, <clears throat> um, it'll give me an advance of 20,000 Satoshis against my account and they say that that will just reduce the payout for a little while. Um, so it says you mined 20,000 Satoshis in 0 0.8 seconds. So I really didn't mine those uh, just just then, um, but basically they gave me like a, a micro loan, a micro micro loan. Uh, that's worth about 8 cents, 7 cents, maybe 10 cents, I don't know. In any case, um, that's the 21 mine command. If you're not mining, that starts mining. If you are mining already, it gives you the advance. So the next thing I'll do is show the dashboard. And this one we do mine dashboard. And it gives you a little thing, tell you that it's going to run. And here it's showing this information about what uh, miner daemon, uh, what mi kind of miner it's running. I've had this, uh, the Bitcoin computer running for 10 days, uh, their address for mining, my username, how many shares have been accepted, you've got the adjusted hash rate over the last 5, 15, and 60 minutes in GigaHash, uh, so you can see I'm like um, a little lucky recently. Um, I expect that the hardware is probably just crunching away at the same stuff, but they are getting these shares, the, the hardware is getting these shares and solving them. <coughs> And we can see also the temperature, uh, internal temperature, current, this kind of stuff. <clears throat> I have a kilowatt uh, hooked up and it's showing 24 and a half watts right now. And if I turn off mining, I get like three watts. So that kind of shows you your, your watts, um, your kind of efficiency that you're dealing with. So we'll quit this. Uh, you can see down here, solution event. It's been accepted by the pool every so often it's updating these statistics on the screen and updating the monitor or whatever that is. So here's work event. It's getting a new piece of work from the 21 pool to do uh, and the difficulty shows like kind of it's maybe you can tune this I don't know but in any case difficulty sets how long it should take roughly to mine a share and you want it to be frequent enough because you don't want a block to be found and then the work you're working on to be um, invalid. Basically, you're working on the wrong thing. So I'm going to quit that. And here I'm back to the prompt. So what I wanted to do now was I wanted to download a server. A lot of what's been done with this 21 computer is not the mining. The mining is just to like give it a little bit of Bitcoin to be able to pay for some services. Basically, empower this little computer to buy things on the Internet without you having to put in a credit card number 
we're worrying about it get, getting hacked and something stolen. I mean, I could lose all these Satoshis here, but it's not a ton of money. Uh, really, the idea is that this money would be used to pay other Bitcoin computers for very cheap things, and maybe when millions of, of systems are using it, that will cause this to become a real functioning economy, and maybe the 21 Bitcoin computer can allow me to buy a cluster of servers or something like that. Um, so in any case, I wanted to download a server that I've been working on called the Causeway server. And this is included in uh, Jeff Garzik. He's a, a Bitcoin core developer, uh, worked for BitPay. Uh, he he um, started playing around with the 21 and created a playground a Git project. So I'm going to check that out right now. So just cloning into this folder, 21, playground 21. And I'm going to go into that folder and the Causeway folder, which is where uh, my server is. And then just to get this set up, um, let's see here, we got to do, just check out the readme real quick. Installation, we just got to do a couple things. I've already got this other stuff installed, so that's not a big deal, but I do want to run that, uh, set up that. Uh, database. This is a SQLite database that it uses to store uh, key value pairs, and I'll talk about it in a minute um, what that's for. But first, I gotta copy the uh, settings file over. Probably have to put that into the README. And here, I just want to change a couple things because I'm I'm running other servers on this machine, so I can't use that port. Um, and I also just want to put this here in the video folder. This thing is not really used, but I just want to make sure. So this is important. Video, uh, put Playground 21 Causeway. So we're in the right folder already. And that all looks right. So I'm just going to save that. And we will put in the database. Actually, we'll just do it right here. So shouldn't need to do anything special. And that creates the database. And then to run the server, um, let me just check that settings file one more time. <clears throat> it doesn't have a debug setting here, but um, in the code itself, uh, we can check, see if debug is set on, turned on. So it is, and that will be fine. We'll leave it like that. And then I'll just run the uh, Causeway server. So right now it's starting the server on that port. Um, I'm going to shut this down. This debugger code would let you, I suppose, uh, debug this thing from remotely or something. So uh, I'm going to destroy this after the video. But in any case, um, I'm also running a screen session. So I'm going to just switch to a different, a new window. So I can uh, show you something just quickly to interact with this Causeway server. And here we can run the client. Um, in the first place, actually, I know it's port um, 5005 that I set. So I'm just going to curl that, this URL, localhost 5005. So, okay, so what this shows, and I think this is kind of important to go over, is um, basically documentation on the server itself. And this is not the ideal. Uh, way to show it, but I'm going to show you another one that's better. Um, basically what it does show you though is that there are some endpoints like buy, get, put. Uh, these are different things that the server will do for you. Um, in this case, buy lets you buy some micro hosting, a megabyte of hosting with 50 megabytes of bandwidth, and it'll expire in a year, and that will cost a thousand satoshis. And then uh, get will let you get a piece of information that you've stored with the server. And put will let you store a piece of information with the server. And then we can see the pricing type per megabyte, that it's got a name, that it's got a description. And um, so I'll show you in a second how, where that comes in. Might be kind of useful to know that this information can be crawled by a directory service, uh, that's something else I've been working on, a crawler, 
to be able to list the the services that are on the 21 uh, network. And so actually uh, 21 and company, or 21 Inc., they set up a thing called Zero Tier, which is a private network. Um, it's all got, um, you know, if we do, um, I have config, you'll see my, uh, right here, this Zero Tier, this is a Zero Tier network. This is my IP address on the Zero Tier network. And it basically acts like a LAN, but it runs over the internet. So you can think of it like, you have your computer behind your router, and only the computers inside your house or your office can access those other systems there. And this creates a virtual network across the internet where all the 21 computers can join in. And it's only if you are, I guess, somehow registered with the zero tier network that you can um, join that, that LAN. And um, so this is just sort of part of this playground concept. They designed this computer for development and some people are working on bridging it to the regular internet and setting up services that people can hit uh, from the regular internet but for just kind of prototyping and that kind of stuff uh, this is quite useful. So here we have, um, let's see here, running the Causeway server and I just checked that endpoint so now I'm gonna go back to this uh, server and I'm just gonna quit it control C so we stop that and I'm gonna try one more this is uh, this is the uh, another server I'm running called the up server and localhost this is on port 21411 So this one kind of shows you, let's see, I guess I'll just um, do it the regular way, oh, to less. And then, so this one I've worked on, since it is a directory service and it's crawling a bunch of URLs, like basically any endpoint that is, or any um, service that's on the 21 network, um, I realize what the challenges are in crawling. So a lot of services are right now are just providing a 402 payment required endpoint. And that means that when you go to that endpoint, it's going to tell you payment required. And if you're using a 21 Bitcoin computer, you can go ahead and pay whatever number of Satoshis it is. And then you can make your request if that's to get some piece of data or to put something on it. But the thing is, um, short of that, you, you may just want to know information about the server uh, service. And uh, 21 has a Slack channel where people are sharing this kind of information. But... Um, it, I think it works much better when we're talking about machine payable stuff that a machine should be able to get the information it needs and parse it out so that it can then call the service, it can know the pricing and whatnot. So here I've kind of have a few things, a service version, API version, a list of endpoints, that's an array of endpoints, this is all uh, JSON, where it shows um, sort of the arguments to a, to a particular route or endpoint, so this is for the up route, which is actually, you know, to get services that have been up in the last 24 hours, you don't have to provide any arguments, and what it gives you is the name of the service and the URL of the service. And then I made the up premium one, which costs four times as much, but gives you the, na the uh, name, the URL, description, and the last time it was updated. So you can go through this and see what else can you do with this service. You can also uh, list your own endpoint so that the crawler will visit it, and that has a cost too. So we can kind of, at that point, we can sort of cut out spam being a problem. So um, that is the info endpoint for the up directory server. Uh, the next thing we'll do is try to just do a query against this server. So for this, we're going to do 21 by, and then you can set a max price so that you won't pay more than a certain amount. I know it's 250 Satoshis. And I'm just going to, and then I got to do URL, and then I'm going to do the URL of the server, host, the port 21411, and then the endpoint itself is up. So here I am basically buying it from myself, and what's going to come out is a list of services that have been up in the last 24 hours. So here you can see APIBB, a dealer to no deal game, a stock ticker service, uh, this is a music sharing service, um, the up server itself, all this stuff is running right now. And then 
one more thing that I want to try is called the browser. So I did just developed this, and what the what the browser does is let's see here. I got to do this is actually not part of Causeway. So this one I have to get from from up. So what I'll do is um, let me just get this URL for that. So now I'm cloning the up server itself, and I'm going to just run the browser. So this is browser. I'm not sure that I have to do any configuration, but here it is. Yeah, it's already set up to, to point at my server. So it tells you the cost is 250 Satoshis. Would you like to query up for available endpoints? Yeah, and the first thing you have to do is query for available endpoints. So we'll say yes. Right now it's getting the list of endpoints, this one up here that I just bought. It's buying it again. And now it's giving us a choice. What do we want to see? Which of these do we want to view? So what it's going to do is these are just info URLs, and it will query the one I choose. So I'm going to choose the uh, DNS one, the first one, and just hit Enter. And see now it shows the information that's at that URL. And I can choose, do I want to visit another one? Yes. And this part of it's free. So I've already bought the the um, the directory this one time and then now I will look let's look at number 11 so this is a Causeway server and that's it I'm gonna say no I don't need to visit anymore and that's pretty much the tour I wanted to give you uh, tried a few services um, you could definitely if you have a 21 Bitcoin computer you can try out all the different endpoints and I mean the funny thing is I could probably try all of these for something like 5,000 Satoshis, so, and that's something like two cents. So it's really not expensive to try this stuff. Again, these things are geared toward computers, but um, I think it's an interesting playground, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. All right, take care.